plastic surface, surface and diamond surfaces. So, the aspirity contacts are always affected by this geometry of these surfaces. Okay, and after that, from the surface geometry, we can find this apparent area of contact as well as real area of the contacts. So, first of all, what are the various causes of friction we have to see? There are two types of interaction between the contacting surfaces. First one is adhesion, second one is deformation. So, in adhesion, the real area of contact and adhesion are excavated. When the two surfaces are placed together, the contact occurs at the asperity on the two contacting surfaces. Okay. And the real area of the contact between the two surfaces is very small. And the large area of the surface are separated by the distance, which is more compared to the molecular area of these actions. So, in the case of metals, the real area of contact can be estimated by measuring the electrical resistance across the surfaces of the metals when they are in contacts. <coughs> in this, as the load is carried by point of contacts, the contact pressure at the points of real contact is extremely high. And due to this extremely high pressure, tips of the softer material deform plastically and plastic flows causes the real area of contact to grow. And this growth of this real area of contact takes place by two means of first one is by growth of individual contact areas and by initiation of new contacts means whatever the pointed contacts are get flattened and thus growth of this individual contact areas takes place and second one is by initiation of new contacts so as the area of plastic deformation, the contact pressure is so high that the contacting surfaces get cold welded. And this cold welding between the two contacting surfaces is known as adhesion. Okay. This called so welding is called as adhesion. And this adhesion, <coughs> like glass, marble, or precise gauge blocks. <coughs> Are cleaned and placed together with a light rotary motion, they get practically cold welded. Okay. Continuous phenomena of this welding and breaking of the joints is known as stick slip phenomena. This is the other phenomena again, stick slip phenomena, other phenomena. Okay. So the next interaction or interlocking of the acid is, is deformation. When two surfaces are in contact, sliding contacts, the aspirity on the harder surfaces and entrapped with near particles and penetrate at and flow into a softer surfaces. So this is the deformation. The total frictional force is the addition of these frictional forces due to adhesion and deformation, fluffing. Deformation is the that or fluffing. Total coefficient of friction is the addition of coefficient of friction due to adhesion and the coefficient of friction due to fluffing. Sometimes the coefficient of static friction is greater than one, frictional force is greater than normal load, and due to such high coefficients or adhesion. The sliding motion may be doing in the contacting surfaces, and this is high friction period between the contacting surfaces in the extremely due to the adhesion and deformation is totally absent. So, such adhesion between these two clean and perfectly flat without roughness surfaces is always known as stiction. Stiction is the characterized by high static friction and high level of adhesion. So, how to reduce the stiction effect from this adhesion? We are having some methods. Surface roughness should be considerably greater than the expected thickness. 
the possible smooth conducting surfaces should not be lubricated. Okay. So these are the main two interaction between these conducting surfaces. So this is the reason it deformations. And these are main causes for the frictions. Now, in another figure, we are seeing here deformations. So we see a reason point of contact or real area of the contact when coming each others we produce a result while in deformation we see here <coughs> according to this, this when one of the two surfaces is sliding contact and harder than the other the asperity is on the harder surface and then trap wear particle penetrate and plugs into softer surfaces as shown in the figure. Okay, so fluffing component of the friction can be calculated by using model rigid asperities. So you see here, this is a normal load applied. This is the force of deformation. <coughs> It is penetrated into the other materials. So, four types of model asperities are used for calculation purposes. It's conical, spherical, upright cylindrical, and transfer cylindrical. So, here conical asperities are always shown conical, vertical contact area, etc. Okay. So, therefore, the normal load W is supported by horizontal projections of the aspirity contact area AH. Okay. So aspirity area contact this AH is that shown here <coughs> and normal load is applied from the top sides and supported and the frictional force FD. D we have taken for deformations FD frictional force supported by the vertical position of this aspirity AB. Okay. So frictional force due to deformation or fluffing and the coefficient of friction due to deformation is given by Fd by W. Okay. So for smaller semicon angle alpha, the coefficient of friction is alpha. <coughs> the coefficient of friction due to the deformation fluffing is large. The another phenomena, one among these two, stick slip vibration or stick friction. If the two contacting surfaces having reasonably large difference between the coefficient of static friction Fs and the coefficient of kinetic friction Fk are subjected to tangential force or sliding velocity, which varies time, then there is a large fluctuation of frictional forces. And due to this large fluctuation of frictional force, <coughs> the relative motion between the two conducting surfaces is in the form of jerks or oscillation. And such phenomena is known as stick slip phenomenon or stick slip frictions or stick slip oscillations. Okay. So in this, we are having stick phase and stick, uh, slip phase. Okay. Stick, stick and slips. So the series of this stick and stick slips takes place this stick slip phenomena. So example of this stick slip friction is chatter in bearings, chatter in windshield wipers, chatter during the machining, musical notes, jerking of the brakes. Okay. Like pile in the sliding velocity is geometry varied. So what are the sources of this stick slip phenomena? You can see the sources. So the stick slip friction occurs due to the following reasons. The large difference between the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction means when there is a very big difference between static friction and coefficient of kinetic friction, then there is stick slip phenomena. The variation in sliding velocity with time and the reduction in coefficient 
of kinetic friction with increase in sliding velocity that is negative in the <laughs> so the stickslip oscillations of phenomena of vibrations are always <clears throat> the example we are seeing here visual notes in string musical instruments okay or like violins jerking of weights etc so the another factor affecting on the frictions and wheels are always the temperatures so here Let's stop here. You see the next in next lectures.